Welcome, everybody. It is January 26th at 11 a.m., another great Friday. Hope everyone had a great week. Uh, this is the Florida EMS webinar, a.k.a. the Seagulls. And we bring really smart, uh, passionate people to the show every week. And uh, these are all going to be on YouTube. So if, you don't, if you're not on our YouTube channel already, uh, search YouTube for Florida NAEMSP. Uh, and you'll you'll find uh, over about 150 speakers already we've had uh, since the start of this thing. So uh, we have a few more people uh, coming in today. But um, today we have a, a very special uh, speaker. Um, Eric and I have known each other for uh, for quite some time. He was actually a speaker at First Air First Care. Um, he's got an amazing story to tell. He's an amazing leader, and um, he's up in Tennessee. And what what he's doing now is something that I think that all of us need to at least hear about and maybe even try to incorporate in our own agencies is uh, EMS leadership. Um, and so, Eric, if you wouldn't mind uh, making a quick introduction, and uh, see, you, we have some people from your state on the call, which is amazing. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. What an honor it is to be able to uh, be uh, sharing some information uh, with you today over the next few minutes. I'm actually presenting to you today from Vanderbilt University Medical Center uh, in Nashville. And uh, I have been part of the team, the EMS Center of Excellence team um, at Vanderbilt since 2015. And uh, I joined Vanderbilt back in 2005. And uh, yeah, it's just been an amazing opportunity to be able to learn from uh, amazing people, and not just here, but really kind of across our state. Uh, I wanted to kind of uh, briefly share with you just a little bit of background on me is um, my career started out as a volunteer firefighter uh, in Howard County, Maryland, which is just outside of Baltimore. I uh, kind of fell in love with the fire service and uh, moved to Tennessee and then went to paramedic school, graduated that 1990 and worked in a county that is just adjacent to Nashville for about 11 years. Uh, after that journey, I uh, went to nursing school and then um, eventually went on to get my master's in nursing, uh, specifically uh, in leadership. So leadership has been uh, really a passion of mine. Uh, I've been teaching leadership for probably about a dozen years, and um, it's just a, an, an awesome thing. And today, what I wanted to talk to you all about for the next few minutes is really um, – what we believe is a groundbreaking statewide EMS uh, leadership initiative that we believe has the potential uh, to really impact our field and um, really uh, change the culture is really what we're uh, trying to do. And just to kind of give you just a little bit of background about you know, how we got here today, just really kind of assessing the needs that leadership is important is uh, a few years ago, our state EMS director, uh, Director Brandon Ward, gathered uh, some key stakeholders and some young professionals um, in a room. And his mission was uh, to be able to get some feedback about some of the challenges that these frontline providers were facing. And uh, it was a fascinating meeting to be part of. And during this meeting, um, these individuals opened up and they actually signed a disclosure agreement um, or a confidential agreement. And uh, so what was discussed, you know, really stayed there. We protected the individuals. But some of the feedback that was received was what you might expect, uh, lack of pay, um, uh, maybe lack of retirement. But this was the part that sort of raised everybody's eyebrows is there was a huge dissatisfier um, with the leadership um, realm and the people that they report to or our industry and the state in general. Specifically, some of the examples that we heard was my supervisor was promoted because they were a good medic, but they are a terrible leader. So that kind of, you know, got a lot of conversations going. Well, unfortunately, the pandemic hit and resulted in uh, postponing this project. However, about a year ago, our state director, uh, Director Ward, got together some additional key stakeholders and a vision was created and formulated, which has now grown into a statewide partnership with the Tennessee EMS Education Association. Uh, we refer to them as TIMSA. And TIMSA is a statewide organization that promotes education and leadership development across the state. 
Uh, this partnership has resulted in, in why I'm here today uh, in the development of a comprehensive leadership workshop that will be available to every provider across the state. The second thing that we have been able to do is we've launched a monthly leadership podcast uh, that we are about one year into that, and then also uh, a coaching call. I wanted to spend just a minute to talk about our leadership podcast. This is a little bit different uh, from what we found is there's a lot of clinical podcasts that are out, but we did not want to touch that. We wanted to interview people uh, that had a story of success. And uh, I am honored to be able to share with you that Dr. Antebi is actually going to be featured on the podcast with me. We're recording it next week and uh, to share his story of success and what leadership looks like to him. And we hope that episode will be out um, probably um, spring at the latest. It's on Apple and Spotify. But in addition to those three things, um, uh, under the advisement of Director Ward, the Tennessee State EMS Board has established a new subcommittee that's titled Leadership and Advancement Committee. And I feel that's just a, a, um, a demonstration of his commitment about this important initiative to really uh, develop our young leaders to see if uh, we can make an impact and add value to those individuals. So I wanted to share with you just a couple of minutes about the leadership workshop. Um, so we spent about six months developing this course, and it was pretty grueling. Uh, there was a, uh, several of us, a handful of us, about five or six that really were behind the content. And uh, we spent um, several full days in a room with a whiteboard going through hundreds of slides. Um, and all of these individuals had taught leadership. And we just kind of put all of our experiences together, and then we developed the curriculum. So the time came that we were going to do a beta test and we got 40 of the most successful EMS leaders and directors from across our state in the room. So they arrived and it was a little bit surprising because when they got there, it was an intimidating group. You know, some of these individuals had up to four years experience and we're going to teach them concepts on leadership, which you, 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 it, it's really a hard barrier to overcome. But what we asked them is we said, listen, we know that your experience supersedes um, most people in the state. But we want to challenge you to let us present this course to you as we were doing it with young providers. And they agreed. And we went through it. And some of them had gave us feedback, like some of the concepts and discussions that we were having, we'd never done before, and we wish we would have learned about this sooner. So we took that feedback and we adjusted the curriculum uh, slightly, and then we did a second beta test group. And these were about 25 leaders across the state that were young, that were uh, up and coming individuals. Some of them were supervisors new to the position. Some of them uh, were just identified as people that had great potential. So we did that beta test group. And the feedback that we've received from this group was really overwhelming and a little bit surprising. Um, we heard feedback like, you know, if, especially from the beginning, uh, the, the leader group was, you know, the information was useful, not uh, just for leadership, but for everyday life, um, well put together information and the exercises and discussions were helpful. However, the beta test number two with the individuals that were the providers we uh, learned about some challenges that we were not expecting. And some of the, the challenges that these individuals were facing were things that we take for granted as leaders, but we were getting comments like, how do you overcome fear? Uh, I'm dealing with imposter syndrome. Um, what is it? H how do I deal with it? How do I get through it? Um, understanding core values, understanding what healthy habits are, but simply understanding the concept of leading yourself. And um, most of this was identified because this is not a presentation that's death by PowerPoint. Uh, we're facilitating questions. And uh, what does a leader look like? And then we talk about that from their experiences. And it, it was pretty amazing uh, to get that feedback. So where we are currently is um, the presentation is finalized. And uh, we are rolling it out at our yearly leadership conference um, in mid-February uh, in beautiful Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And we're doing a pre-con. 
And uh, at, after that conference, we are officially rolling out across the state. And we are partner with, uh, partnering with the directors associations uh, across the state to be able to offer this um, workshop. And, uh, you know, obviously, TIMSA is a big part of that. Um, and many of us are, you know, that are volunteering our time to do this is just an, an incredible reward. And we've gotten some feedback. We got some people on the waiting list. Um, people are already starting to talk about this and we're getting contacts about, hey, can you come and just teach a, an hour uh, lecture on, you know, why leadership is, is important. And we've promoted that on the podcast as well, just sort of helpfully changing the culture, knowing that this is not a one time thing. It's something that's going to be. Um, that we're going to have to continue to work on uh, for years to come. And um, I wanted to give uh, uh, a little bit of outline about the actual program just briefly is the, um, the outline we, there are different modules. So leadership fundamentals. Um, the module two would be talking about character, talking about problem solving, how is resilience fit into this, um, the levels of leadership, um, what about personal growth, how to communicate, what does self-improvement look like, you know, what is a leadership plan, uh, and then we do an application exercise uh, with a fun game activity, and then last but not least, uh, we do a very robust Q&A, and uh, which is, is fascinating with just hearing the questions that are, uh, that are asked. Uh, we have developed a workbook specifically for this class. So as we go through each exercise, which is very interactive, they're able to record it. And at the end of the program, they're able to take that and refer to this uh, workbook, you know, at any point in any journey. Um, the plans are to have a leadership program that is going to be developed. There's going to be one program per year. This is the fundamental class that, that we have done, but we're already looking at what is uh, 2025's class going to be. Um, and then uh, after that, we're going to build uh, additional content, which will be standalone, by the way. Uh, something else that I'm really excited uh, about is our participation with some leaders within the state. Um, we have physician involvement, and one of those individuals is uh, Dr. Jarrett McKinney. Um, he's really my partner in crime here at Vanderbilt and uh, is on the EMS uh, board as well, an EMS board certified physician, uh, was trained by Dr. Slovis, uh, Corey Slovis, and all of you know his name. And uh, so we're excited to get that because we understand that, you know, having those physicians which have so much influence that can help us at minimum with Q&A, and it, it just allows us to, to, to be able to promote and add value um, to these individuals. So, um, you know, with that, we are prepared and, you know, ready to take this on the road and making final tweaks. And um, so that's just sort of an overview of the program. And um, I am happy to uh, take questions. I know Dr. Antebi, I believe, has a slide that has my contact information. And I know that's a brief overview, but uh, I am happy to take any questions at this point. And uh, Dr. Antebi, I'll turn it over to you and I'll let you take the reins and I'm happy to, uh, to do whatever we got to do at this point to answer questions. Awesome. Eric, that was incredible. I, I, I would love to open it up. Uh, I'll make a couple of comments. I'll put your slide up at the very end if that's okay. Of course. Uh, I'm sure people would want to contact you. Um, and we, we, quite frankly, I think it would be great if, you know, uh, we could somehow get you back here to our yearly conference as well. Um, you know, I, I love this concept. What I love about the fire department, you know, at least in, in our area here, is that when you when you come in there, you know, there is that stair step and you could see your future in front of you. The question is, is how do you get how do you get people to a recognize that they are a leadership quality once they are recognized or that either they recognize themselves or, or people around them say, hey, that that person is just incredible. Um then you kind of get them through some sort of process, right? Whether it's officer development, et cetera. Um, I'm wondering with, with the course that you have, and again, there, there's a lot of people on this call who have mentored me. And I'm, I, you know, I can see uh, Dr. Wayne Lee was the first person, uh, Ken Shepke, uh, Paul Pepe, uh, Julie Downey. There, 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 are, there are many people who, who have kind of shown me the way 
how do you how do you provide that person that young leader with mentorship um, beyond the course right that actually provide some kind of accountability, which I think is very important. Um, I'm just curious, beyond that leadership course, what is your plan for beyond that to have some accountability and mentorship moving forward? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that's probably one of the obstacles, right? It's not just a one and done. So being able to uh, change the culture of this, um, our coaching calls, I'll give you an example of what that is. We're starting this in March where it is going to be an opportunity for these individuals to call in and listen. We're doing them on a Friday morning from 7 to 7.30. But we believe it's it's the small steps that we, we do on a consistent basis and the buy-in of leadership um, with, you know, traveling around across the state, uh, doing the podcast. But it only takes a couple of individuals that that are identified to reach down and say, listen, you have great leadership potential. We want you to to be part of this project. So in my opinion, that's what's happened is we're teaching in this class to say, guess what? You are a leader um, from the provider standpoint. Just think of the influence that you have to be able to influence a patient going to the hospital or not. So we just know it's going to take consistent activity. Um, and that's why we're, um, we're excited because so many people are part of this. The, um, Part of our uh, mission as the subcommittee of the EMS board is to really look at this and to uh, get people at the table that are behind this mission and the vision. So we believe, and we only had one meeting with that subcommittee. We have a lot of work to do, but uh, we just know this is going to be in it for the long haul and develop this, this, hill this course in the hill. curriculum. <laughs> well, I think I think I had to meet that person. Uh, all right, awesome. That that was that was an excellent uh, uh, answer. I appreciate that. Um, I, I would love to hear. We have a lot of great people on this call, um, and so if you have a question, raise your hand. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one more follow up, which is at least in the last couple of years um, that I've seen people who were, you know, basically doing their job, and they're doing it very well, but they were kind of that diamond in the rough. Okay, mm-hmm. and then the spark that I that I've seen with my own two eyes is basically that those folks were sent out to a conference, right? I'm thinking of Chief Gonzalez and Chief Moran went to the Seattle RA, came back, exploded it here, and now we have Resuscitate Florida. We, we, I mean, th- thanks to everyone at the state, Tom DiBernardo, Ken Shepke, Steve McCoy. Um, th- those two individuals literally went, they got activated. Uh, Charlie Coyle, uh, he just came with me at NAMSP. And I mean, the guy's incredible just to, to, you know, just to begin with, but now he is like, we're on research calls. Now it seems like every other day he's been activated. Right. Um, what, what are your thoughts about um, having people? And again, that's what this whole webinar is for. It's a Florida NMSP. We want people to join. We want people to get involved. What are your thoughts about having people have some sort of activity external to the department on a regional or national or state or national level to then activate them. I'm just curious of your thoughts on that. Now, I love that because it takes an army to do this. And um, the more people that are part of this, uh, I think the better. Ultimately, what we want to do is to develop a a train the trainer uh, type of a program where we're actually identifying those young individuals that are, you know, uh, going to outlast us because they're younger than us to be able to get them. So I think it's our responsibility as leaders to intentionally look for those individuals and lift them up and share with them that, hey, you have the potential to carry this on long after we're gone. But you're right. I love the idea. And and that is certainly something that uh, is going to be important for the continuation of this. Awesome. And now I want to, I'm going to pick on some people because there, there there's a lot of great people here who have set the stage, especially where I am in Broward and Palm Beach County um, and who have successfully um, positioned th- their area so that there was a succession plan, et cetera. So let me bring in Dr. Lee. Uh, let me start with you, Wayne. Uh, you, you've, you've, you've been a leader in so many different areas. You've led so many on the hospital side, the EMS side. Um, I'd love to hear your take on this and, and some of your input. Well, first of all, this is just a great topic. I just love this. And Eric, uh, thank you so much and your team and 
and Peter for uh, bringing him on board. You know, it's interesting. Uh, just um, day before yesterday, I had lunch with the exec of uh, Leadership Broward, which is a program in Broward County. It's been around, I think now we're on class 42. And I was actually the first physician in the program, which was in, uh, uh, I was in class six. Now they're up to 40. And um, it's interesting because one of my criticisms that that program, and I even said this to him the other day, was, you know, it, we went out to all of the, you know, we went to the jails, we went to the schools, we went to uh, the arts and culture day, et cetera, day for a year, we had a commitment. And, but we never talked about leadership. <laughs> and it was, so listening to you talk about the questions of leadership, overcome fear, the imposter syndrome, and so on and so forth. I think really you nailed it. But with that said, it's interesting to me because I think leadership goes beyond leadership and EMS you know, and it's leadership in the community. And I think we have some people on here that uh, uh, exemplify that. So I would, and in thinking about this, listening to you, I thought to myself, there's never been an EMS chief or a paramedic to my knowledge in the leadership Broward class, you know, and we're up to, uh, I think they do 50 a year for now, how many years, 30 years. And I, so, but I do think it goes beyond the community. I mean, beyond EMS, but I think you're starting at the right place. I welcome it. I can't wait to see it down here. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you so much. Great, great comment, Wayne. Thank you so much. And I, and Eric, I think that you ought to look at Wayne for your podcast because he's a wealth of knowledge. Um, I'm going to bring in, uh, let's see, Dr. Paul Pepe. So Paul, you have mentored many, many, many people. You, I, um, I think that if there's someone who can, who can detect talent and those people who don't even know that they're talented um, and, 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 and rise them up. So you, you, in my opinion, epitomize that. Can you, can you say a couple of words uh, with respect to leadership and uh, someone who's been in this for so long? Uh, I don't know where to begin in some respect, but yeah, you're right. I had an eye for pe finding people that were not talented. You're a good example of that. You know, so, no, just kidding. <laughs> True. <laughs> but, the, uh, no, but, no, but I mean, I, well, I, but on, on that note, but be very blunt, um, sometimes it's hard. To, some people are not natural leaders and there are some people who are natural leaders and you'll see they are people who exude caring about others and caring about what those other people want or need or, you know, that kind of thing. And like, for example, when, you know, when I found an NMSP, the reason I did it was because there was this, this need there when you got there. And I didn't think I was an expert, but I found out there were people out there who really needed help. So what it was is just being in, or what I would do on the streets to say, hey, medics, what do you need? And I think that was really important because a lot of what they felt was that they had what they called a lack of, um, you know, a lack of control there. I forgot what the, uh, the, the, the psychologist call it. Right. But um, they just felt, does anybody give a damn about us down here? So I, I think I could just summarize it real quick is that when you do a word association game about leadership, uh, if you said, Hey, what's right now, if I asked you, uh, let's do word association, uh, son, daughter, sun, moon, you know, day, night. And then when I go to leadership, okay, next thing you know, it goes all over the map, you know, in terms of that. But what it ultimately comes down to when people say someone who listens or somebody who always has good advice or whatever, it really kind of comes down to this common denominator of trust. And that takes time. So leadership takes time. I know that's just, yes. that's just a getting little, you know, nutshell, but uh, I'd be very glad to uh, help out by the way, with your course in the future, be a speaker. Um, but, but I hadn't really organized my thoughts about this too much, but I, I, those, that's my initial blur out there. I hope, does that, I hope that helps yeah. or yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I love, I love the, the word trust. I think it's, it, it, it takes time to build. Uh, it's easily destroyed. Um, and you really have to work hard on it every single day to make it so that people really do trust you, especially in this field. So I, I, you know, I think that's very important. Years ago, by the way, years ago, I wrote an article about what defines a successful medical director, for example, right? And I had this one thing, but, uh, you know, this, in the, the suggestion how you handled day-to-day -day stuff that comes up, right? It was like like with Ulysses, uh, you know, it wasn't that he got back to Ithaca, it's how he handled all the stuff along the way that defined him as a hero. Um, but but also then I learned that from when I had reactions from the medics, they'd say, 
a successful medical director, they think in our mind, is somebody that we feel like we could talk to, you know, we can, we can come to. So th- I'm just taking that analogy and extrapolating it and say that's what takes a good leader, someone that they, you feel is approachable and will listen to you and care about you. And that You could say, I care about you, and th- some people just go, yeah, right. Whereas it's the, the true leaders are the people who they go, that guy really cares about us. I may not like him for this, or I may not like him, but they, they care about us. And that's, that's leadership. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to bring in now um, uh, Dr. Kramer, uh, Kramer, John, if you wouldn't mind um, coming in here, you're, you're someone who's, who, who's basically done it all, you know, medical director, <laughs> uh, you want, you went to the state level. Now you're leading the charge, um, um, you know, on the, on the commercial side slash um, helping us um, kind of create a blood program nationally, if you will, and helping us that way. So from your perspective of the world, after hearing what Eric said, I would love to hear your insight uh, with respect to leadership in EMS. Well, I think the, the, the program that you have outlined and particularly the outreach to uh, everybody in the discipline, you know, you, you don't focus on supervisors, you don't focus on administrators, you're taking it out to the, the field clinicians, which I think is, is really important. I would would only echo the the comments that have been made earlier. I mean, trust is um, a, a critical component of it. Peter, you nailed it when you said that you can lose trust instantly, and it takes forever to to either build it initially or build it back. Um, you know, you've got to be willing to communicate with folks, and you've got to be willing to listen to them and take the input that they receive. So I think this is a, a really cool initiative that you all need to really share with the, with throughout the rest of the EMS community. You know, take your your state EMS office should take it to the SEMSO and other state EMS offices and, and uh, really spread it out. I completely agree on that one. Let me bring in Joseph. Joseph Zalkin, you there? So yeah, I'm uh, here. Joseph, I know that's kind of it's probably raining where you are, but um you you are also someone who has really taken the bull by the horns. You've done so many great things in your career, and then you said, you know, no, I'm I'm not gonna retire. I'm gonna help other people. And you're you you've helped many of us, including myself, and now on the national level. Uh, you you're a giver. Uh you're the ultimate mensch. Um, well, so you. can you talk about leadership from your from your perspective and um and give us some advice? Uh, before we turn it back over to Eric. I, I think, and sure, I love the program Tennessee's starting to do. I, I think that's great. Um, leaders are developed. They're not born. And leadership is not just a title. It's, you know, a performance piece. Uh, someone has to lead. Someone has to make decisions. In EMS, I think we all have an intrinsic capability of doing something. A leader does something right for the good of all uh in all my years gosh that's hard to say in all my years i've seen a lot of different leadership styles we don't come into the business knowing what to do uh, but i think we learn what not to do and try to develop rip off and duplicate from others of what's successful you know when you're dealing with a multi-million dollar budget or a ten thousand dollar budget and dealing with people There's an interface there for what matters and how to achieve your goals. So much much success to Tennessee. Great to hear what's going on there. Thank you, Peter. That's that's what you call threading the needle. And and, and leaders have to do that, Um, especially whether you're a medical director, if you're you're an EMS leader, um, you you, you have to kind of uh, find the, the signal through all the noise that's around. And I think the good ones do that. So... Um, Eric, I'm going to give you the last word. We're going to go to Dr. Pepe's webinar after this, but I have your information on the screen. Give us a last word. You have a lot of folks here who are in a leadership role, but you have some people on this call who are our future leaders. So what are, what are your final comments to, to all of us? And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you. I, what an honor it is uh, for me to be able to spend time with you. I took notes, as you could tell, and um, you know, I appreciate the insights, uh, value, uh, everything that you all shared. And um, yeah, just totally honored. One of the, the one of the ways that we end the podcast 
is uh, we try to share the message is the most important person that you're ever going to lead is you. And I believe it all starts with that. And uh, once again, thank you so much. And uh, hope to get to travel there to visit with everybody. Awesome. All right. Thank you. And thanks, everyone. I'm going to put up in the chat right now the link to go over to Eagles webinar. So if you're free, uh, please join us. There's a link. I'll stick around for a little bit. Eric is always available and uh, hope you reach out to him. And I'll, I'll stick around here for another couple of minutes until everybody either ends or clicks on over to the next webinar. Thanks, everyone.